had a great morning. Um, so far, you know, this has been uh, what a great day this has been. We have uh, 24 guys that signed um, in this class. We think it's an unbelievable class. Uh, you know, as, as this coaching staff uh, is an inaugural cl class, um, you know, th there's a lot of people uh, that had to make this make this happen. And uh, the thing that, you know, I want to make sure I do first off publicly is, is thank the families. There's a lot of families here that, that jumped on board here before we won a game at all this year. And they believed in um, what we were uh, talking to these families about and the philosophies and what was going to go on. And, and here we are um, in the early signing day and, um, you know, undefeated playing in the, uh, in the national semifinals. And, um, you know, I just want to say thank you publicly to all the families out there and the recruits who believed in us from the beginning. And, um, and this is going to be one heck of a class. We have eight guys from Ohio. We have uh, 13 states represented. And uh, 14 of these guys are coming at mid-year, which is the, the highest we've ever had here. And uh, so we're excited to get these guys in here and get to work. Uh, so with that, I'll answer any of your questions. We'll open it up. Third row left. Dan? Ryan, obviously you guys had a couple defensive backs are committed who haven't signed yet. But other than that, is the class pretty much full at this point? Yeah, yeah. I mean, 24 guys. That's, that's a full class right there. And, um, you know, I, I thought the staff did an unbelievable job. And you can tell the relationships that were built, to, you know, to get – uh, you know, guys like Legend Cavazos and, uh, you know, Ryan Watts, Lathan Ransom, um, you know, Court Williams, uh, you know, to get these guys here, you know, going through the turmoil that we went in with losing Jeff, just goes to show you how much these guys love Ohio State and how much they want to be here and how much they believe in the development that goes on here. And, uh, you know, they made their commitment to Ohio State. And I know Buckeye Nation is really happy they signed today. What was that process like with the defensive backs? Who all was involved in that and kind of playing those roles that Jeff Hafley otherwise would have played? Yeah, we just talked about how, you know, when you come to Ohio State, you're going to go to practice every day, first off, against the best players in the country. So every day, you know, there, there's been uh, NFL GMs and head coaches who come in and ask to watch our practice film. Why? Because there's first-rounders going against you every single day. So that's, that's one of the things that we do. And then also, you know, Mickey Murati is a huge part of the development here at any position, certainly a DB. And that uh, this defense is not going to change. This is a defense that uh, I had a vision for, and, and Jeff came in and did a great job of, you know, uh, putting that defense on the field this year. But that's not going to change. We recruited to this system. And, uh, and it was a team effort. It was everybody just communicating with that. It was Mark Pantone. It was uh, Matt Barnes. Uh, you know, I obviously had a, a big hand in it. Did you guys have anyone serving as a temp assistant coach in Hathley's place on the recruiting trail? No, no. Um, you know, uh, Jeff was out there recruiting up, up until, you know, the last day of recruiting when we were on the road. And, uh, you know, and Jeff also reached out to those guys and, and understands that uh, this has been a great place before Jeff came and it'll be great after he left and, and that he was, um, you know, fortunate enough to be a part of this thing. But, but uh, you know, we're going to be in great hands moving forward. As you mentioned, the guys, most of these guys in this class uh, committed well before you guys were 13-0. and 0. Um, How much momentum, Ryan, does this give you going into 2021? And maybe what are some of the... Um, the positions that are the, of the utmost importance to you in that class. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it gives unbelievable momentum. Just talking about, um, you know, getting some of the best players in the country, but the best people. I, I think you're going to find out when, as these guys come in, they, they're some of the, uh, the best people I've been around just in terms of uh, the way that they handle their business on and off the field. Great students, captains, leadership, and again, loyalty, you know, from, from, from the get-go on this thing. These guys have been loyal. A couple things that came through, whether it was the change in staff from, from Coach Meyer to me, uh, in our staff, and then also just not knowing, you know, throughout the summer what, what this year was going to look like, and there was a faith there, and that means a lot to me. Um, and then, you know, for the guys who, who lost Jeff right here a week before signing day, so that that shows a lot about who these people are. And um, you know, I thought going into this, um, going into this recruiting cycle, offensive line was a huge deal, and um, I thought uh, Coach Stud did an unbelievable job. Uh, we signed six offensive linemen, three from Ohio, uh, one from Indiana, one from the state up north. And then one from New Jersey, um, you know, Paris Johnson, uh, the number one tackle in America. Um, you know, he's been with us all along. He helped us in recruiting. Uh, he and his mom, Monica, were a huge part of this thing. And, uh, you know, I, I owe them uh, everything because uh, they've, they've kind of kept this thing together for us. They've been a huge part of it. And uh, he's going to have an unbelievable career here. But, again, that was, that was a, a position in need going into this class, and I thought we hit a home run there. Just real quick, I want to get your opinion on the timing of the early signing period in football. For years it was debated, will, will there be an early signing period in college football? And I think a lot of us thought if there would be one, it would be like basketball, it would be before the season. I know you're a guy, that's just the way it is. That's how we're going to attack it. Just, I'm curious what you think about the timing. Is it just six weeks away from the next signing day? Do you think it should be before the season if you were – I got, I got to really sit down and think about this because um, I was not part of those conversations, but I'm in it right now. And um, 
however this came down, I'm not sure that they realized what this was going to be like for uh, a coaching staff and a team where uh, you're playing on the 28th, uh, you play in a Big Ten championship game, uh, you have one week on the road to go recruit these guys and get out there. There's possible coaching ch changes on your staff. Uh, you have, you know, 14 guys coming at mid-year. You have award shows to go to. And then, by the way, you know, once you get off the road, you have two weeks to get ready to go play Clemson. Uh, that, that's a very stressful time. And it is what it is. We're keeping our head down and we're going. But uh, I think we have to take a hard look at that. Ryan, last year when we talked to you about the class, you were trying to keep it together after after the coaching change. So this is your first time to, to put together a whole class. I'm curious just how it was different for you this time around, attacking it from a head coaching perspective. Yeah, well, you know, at, at this time last year, like you said, it was, um, you know, just talking to the guys about, um, you know, our coaching staff and where we were going, and that was kind of in short short order. And um, but, but this was our first real class. This is our first class from beginning to end, and, there was a lot more time, a lot more relationships built with deeper uh, connections there and um, just a lot more time. And um, so, I, again, I thought our staff did a great job. Um, you talk about some of the work it takes to recruit nationally, just the travel and time and phone calls and, you know, the, the work Mark Pantone and his staff did to get this class together is just tremendous. But, um, you know, it's great to celebrate uh, on a day like today because there's so much work that gets put into this. How much did you take from working under Coach Meyer of just – how you handle all of this, the, the importance of recruiting. I mean, obviously that's important, but he puts such an emphasis in, in these type of classes. Yeah, he was a uh, you know, great recruiter. You know, he really recruited unbelievable players here, and that's, that's why our roster is so good the way it is right now. And um, so we want to continue that and learn a ton. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about the receiver hall, uh, you know, a couple of five stars, a couple of four stars. I mean, just how that class came together and just have you seen a group in one class – just that strong with what you have there with, with Julian and Jackson and G and with Mookie? Uh, no. I mean, I, I, this is probably the strongest class I've seen uh, in a long time that, that, I, that I can remember. Um, you know, Julian Fleming, um, you know, had an unbelievable high school career, comes in uh, highly decorated, but, but he's, he's a great young man. Uh, his family is, is awesome. You know, his mom, Betsy, and his grandfather, Mick, and, and you know, all of them. You know they're really going to help support him while he's here, and and uh, that was a hard decision for him to leave Pennsylvania to come here. But uh, he's going to have a great career here, and um, you know we think that he has a chance to be a great one. And then, you know Jackson, um, you talk about having an unbelievable season. The season he had down there at Rockwall um, is you know again one of the better ones I've seen in a long time. And um, I, again, I I can't wait to see him on the field. Uh, G Scott is one of those guys that um, you know, every time you talk about G. Scott, everybody has unbelievable things to say about him. Why? Because he's not only a great player, but he's a great person. He's been loyal from the get-go. This is a young man from uh, Seattle, Washington, who has got a, got a long way to come here. A lot of people had to go through that door and say, hey, no, why don't you stay closer to home? And, and he stayed loyal the whole time. And uh, He's a big, strong, physical receiver. That chance to be great. And then Mookie Cooper uh, you know, didn't get a chance to play this year because of an ineligibility um, situation in his school. But, but he's more of a slot receiver. Um, you know, he kind of is going to work inside a little bit, great short area quickness. And um, so I know he's looking forward to get back on the field and playing. Uh, but again, I, I think those are real weapons. And I think that had something to do with, you know, being able to sign, you know, two quarterbacks in this class was knowing that they're, they're coming in with really good receivers. I just want to follow up on that, too, with, with Gene talking about him being a good person. There were the stories coming out of Seattle with him befriending the, uh, the homeless Buckeye fan and everything. Just talk about G maybe as, as, as a person of what, you know, what he's like off the field. Yeah, he's special. Um, he, like you said, he's got a huge heart. And what Some of the stuff he's done, you guys have seen. But uh, we saw that early on and, and uh, what he's done to help put this class together just uh, through text messages, group texts, uh, talking to those guys, you know, meeting different guys at camps uh, when he's here on campus. And, uh, again, comes from a great family. And I can't say enough about who he is, but also as a player. I mean, you talk about a dominant physical player. When you, you watch his film, it just jumps off the screen. And so um, super excited. He's a Buckeye. And for the, for the right, uh, Jack, Zach. Uh, Coach, what's your relationship like with Luke White player? Both East Coast guys coming to the Midwest. So I'm wondering if you guys bonded over any of that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, we did. And, um, you know, his coach, Augie Hoffman, played at Boston College when I was there. He's an offensive lineman. And that's uh, an area that I've recruited, uh, you know, when I was um, at Boston College. It's a great school. And, uh, and Luke's another guy who, you know, was bought in from the beginning. He never wavered at all. I think he's got a chance to be a great interior lineman. Um, you talk about uh, somebody who really takes a lot of pride in the way he goes about his business. He's going to come in here. He's going to be detailed. He's going to work hard. He comes from a great program. 
And, uh, you know, again, another guy that I think has got a great uh, ceiling. Yeah, how do you think he exemplifies both East Coast and Midwest qualities? Yeah, well, it's a good question. I think uh, he's definitely got some jersey in him. You know, he, uh, he's, got, he's got an edge to him, but, but he also has that hardworking mentality that I think, and he's got a lot of pride and loyalty. So, uh, yeah, I agree. I think he's got, uh, you know, kind of both things. You remember uh, who his dog's named after? I forget. Mark Sanchez. Oh, that's right. That's right with the Jets. Yeah. <laughs> you guys remember bonding over that, too? That's right. Because, yeah, we talked about that for a while because uh, I coached Mark uh, when I was with the Eagles. And then, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Ryan, when you are <coughs> scouting or looking at players, do you compare them to past players that, like, these receivers, do they remind you, I mean, of, of, of other players? Like, Sometimes. Sometimes, you know, you see somebody and you say, that guy kind of reminds me of, of somebody else. Um, but then other times they just kind of are who they are. And then uh, the more you get around, the more you learn more about them too. Um, because it is hard to kind of see things on film. You know, film helps you. It's a part of the process. But so much of it is, is who they are as people too and their work ethic. And when you go into the school, you ask the guidance counselors and the assistant coaches and all the people in the school about who they are. And that's just as important as anything. And so uh, I, I don't think you truly get a feel for who they are until they get here and they're in the program for a little while. And then with Jackson, just the numbers that he puts up, I, I'd say, like, how is that possible? But, like, what do you think of, of when you see that, when you just see the constant production? Uh, d does it translate to, to college? I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, it's exciting when you see stuff like that. You know, when you just see the numbers over 200 – Yards receiving a game, one-handed catches, you know, releases where guys fall down on the ground. I mean, yeah, that, that gets exciting. We can't wait to get them here. Uh, front row left, Nick. You know, obviously yourself, Ohio State, and two of the other teams in the playoff have shown what you can do with the transfer quarterback. But getting two guys in this class, what does that help you do as far as maybe establishing something long-term here? And did you see that as something that was important for the program? Huge. Yeah, huge. And, and this is not something that we uh, took lightly. This is, this is this difficult stuff. You know, you guys – have asked me a lot of questions over the last year about uh, transfers and with Joe and with Justin and different things that have gone on. You know, we've lost Matthew and Tate and, you know, trying to figure out what that is. And so the idea is to have four quarterbacks in that room, and that's not easy to do. Um, and we felt like, you know, we, we had to try to get more depth in that room. And, you know, Jack and CJ both uh, bring different things to the table. Jack is somebody that uh, has been committed all along. You know, he was loyal from the get-go. I watched him throw when he was 16 years old, and I saw something in him. And he, he never wavered either, um, you know. And, and I think, you know, he's got a chance to be a really good player. And then CJ is somebody who came on the scene a little bit later. And um, I think he has a high ceiling as well. So uh, both kind of different stories. But uh, I think both are really excited to come in here and, um, you know, go fight for, for playing time. You know, I think to say that they're going to go compete with Justin to be the starter next year is a little bit, um, you know, unfair. But, you know, to, to fight for that backup spot next year is real. And uh, they'll both be coming in here and, um, you never know how that works. You know, before you know it, you're in it. And uh, in order to go, you know, win championships, you have to have depth at that position. So what an opportunity for a couple guys to come in and compete against each other, you know, get developed in what I think is the best offense in college football and get coached by, you know, some of the best coaches. Obviously, things worked out really well with Justin. They're not always going to work out immediately that well. Is there something about bringing these two guys in yourself, with the background you have, you get to kind of build this from the ground up, the kind of quarterback you want? at the front of this program? Yeah, I mean, Mike Yersich did a great job recruiting both of these guys, and he's going to um, you know, do everything he can to develop these two, and that's, that's the, the promise you make in recruiting. We're going to do everything we can to develop you, and yeah, I think this offense is very quarterback friendly, and when you look at our, our history in the past, what we've done here, having you know, Dwayne and, and seeing what Joe did, and, and now um, you know, Justin being in, in New York City, I mean, uh, I think it speaks for itself, so I think it's exciting. You know, and not being able to have to start right away is a good thing. I think it's, it's good when you can get developed, and um, you know, it's going to start right, right when, you know, in a couple of weeks here. And those guys will be rolled in school. They'll get going with Mick and the, the mat drills and everything else. And then before you know it, we're in spring ball and we go from there. Second row left, Steven. CJ has some things in common with Justin and Dwayne as far as like, like they're all kind of trained by the same QB trainer. And Quincy was here when CJ came for the game. Was there, did you lean on Quincy at all when like asking for some evaluations on CJ, especially since he's working with some of the same guys you coached? Yeah, there's a lot of guys that, you know, we ask when all, in all, um, you know, all these recruits, we just ask different people for, you know, their opinions on, on these guys. And, um, you know, because you don't get to spend as much time with these guys. You just don't. And um, by the time it's contact period, like, for instance, we've recruited all these guys for years. And the only time we were allowed to actually go into their home and have contact with them was this past week before we 
before we got here. That's it. So all the other time is on campus. So, so many people around the school at these camps, different people you trust are the people you ask to find out more about them. And then the more people you trust, you know, you, you trust their opinions, you kind of go with that as, as time goes on. And then you make your own opinions. But, yeah, certainly I think the mark of a good recruiter is asking a lot of questions and finding out what other people think. And then you made an emphasis on wanting to, you know, kind of take back Ohio when you first took this job in recruiting. And you, you did that with this class. You were also off to a good start with that with 2021. But the majority of the guys, I think all of these guys in this class are from Southern Ohio. We just saw Joe at Southern Ohio guy win the Heisman. What have you kind of, where did you guys kind of locate in that area when you guys were looking for recruits? Uh, I, I don't, until you said that, I didn't really notice that. You know what I mean? Um, it it's really has nothing to do with the location in Ohio other than uh, I think that's maybe just, you know, uh, circumstance more than anything. But, you know, maybe in, in a couple of years it'll be all in northern uh, Ohio. But, um, you know, because I think uh, Trey's from, you know, he's not from southern Ohio. But, but you know, there are, there's, you know, there's just kind of trends, I guess, as time goes on. And so, um, you know, we're just – obviously Ohio has a priority for us and always will. And, um, and certainly offensive linemen from Ohio, that was great for us. That was really big. And, and then we'll keep, we'll keep recruiting Ohio because they have priority. And uh, it means a lot to the people in Ohio to be Buckeyes and, and to be a part of this thing. And that, that matters to us. And then lastly, there were some guys in this class that committed before you took the job. And obviously Paris State committed the entire time. And Legend decided to decommit and reopen his options and then came back to the class. Like, what were some of your conversations with those guys when you first took the job and they were getting to know you? Yeah, Paris, um, Paris, it was, you know, uh, we sat down with, with he and Monica and just said, listen, um, you know, we want to just kind of start from scratch. And uh, we kind of just literally wiped the slate clean and started from scratch and just got to know each other and spending time with each other and getting to know, know each other on and off the field. And over time, that relationship and trust grew to where it is right now. And, um, you know, we had a conversation, emotional conversation, uh, you know, early this morning, just talking about how we're finally here and uh, we made it. And, Again, I just thank them for their loyalty and all that. And then uh, with Legend, you know, he, he kind of went through that same process. You know, he, he did decommit, you know, but, and then, um, you know, decided he wanted to be a Buckeye. And then uh, what, what his dad did, CJ, too, to help us with this thing was unbelievable. He really knows football. He's got his great way around these young men, and um, he helped us a lot as well. So uh, both of those guys really mean a lot to me. Hey, Ryan. Uh, in a world where uh, the transfer portal exists, is it easier to get two elite-level quarterbacks um, because they've seen players like Joe Burrow go off and be successful if things don't work out? Like, is it just the world you live in where they have that as a safety blanket? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I try not to think about that. I know it's real. I know it's a real question. But, you know, we bring in guys to come in here and develop and get a degree from Ohio State and, and go play and stay, um, you know, throughout their, their career. Um, and we try to, you know, tackle those things as they come up. Um, and, and I understand the question, but... I hope not. I hope people don't leave. Um, you know, you try to bring guys in, but, you know, there are situations that come up and you try to deal with them, you know, one situation at a time. But I know this, I, I think, you know, our future quarterback is, is much stronger after today. Um, are you ever going to go into a signing day without complete panic? Because, like, just like last year, you had to keep everything together. And then, of course, with Jeff this year, you I mean you got pretty good at it. I mean, what's it like just those last 48, 50, you know, 60, Ooh. whatever hours? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of stress. Um, there's a lot that goes into it because there's so much time put into it. And, um, again, it goes back to relationships. And I think if you've built those relationships over time and you've built trust, then uh, when things like this come up, you know, you can kind of just calm the waters a little bit. And, um, and I think that's what happened. And one last thing. You have uh, commitments, I think, from 13 different states. I'm um, in this class, and when Urban Meyer was here, obviously he brought this program into the national spotlight and was taking the already big Ohio State brand and it made it a national brand. Um, but part of that was because he was like a larger-than-life figure that everybody knew. Um, I was wondering if that was going to be able to continue that way with you being in your first year. I was wondering, did you have a lot of challenges continuing to keep that national recruiting approach? What you know difficulties did you maybe encounter? And, how do you think you were able to continue signing like a national, like Urban Meyer-like class in your first year doing this? Yeah, I certainly think that, that what you say is accurate. I also think that um, the world's gotten smaller. I think with the internet, with just the way the world is now, uh, no matter where you go, uh, and they see that block O, I mean, it's unbelievable. It doesn't matter. When we went out to see Enoch Viamahe, I mean, there were people in Hawaii that, that recognized me right away, and that was before I had coached the game. Um, you go into California, there are Buckeyes everywhere. You go out to Washington, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, went down to Charlotte, North Carolina, did the Nagurski Award. There was a, there was a whole Buckeye club of just hundreds of people. So, you know, when you go down to, to Dallas, Texas, there's Buckeyes everywhere. So I think 
the the brand of, of Buckeye Nation is throughout the country, and I think people feel that. You know, I, I think they feel it, and I just think that nowadays kids are more inclined to, to get on a plane and come to school in Ohio. I think um, that's changed a little bit, maybe more than 20 years ago when it was a little bit more regional-based, I would say. Um, but, no, I, I think that uh, for the most part, families are supportive of their sons in doing that. There are some that we, we faced where they say, you know, we want you to be closer to home, and that happens. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into specifics on who those were, but, you know, they wanted to stay within, you know, maybe an eight-hour radius or whatever that, that is. But, um, you know, we try, to, we try to target the right profile for, for, our, uh, for Ohio State, you know, and making sure that uh, we have the right students and the right uh, background and everything like that. And, and then we go get them. And, um, you know, we find out if there's, if there's real interest. You know, we try not to talk people into coming here. That's the other thing. You know, I think that the, the day of selling – and just trying to get guys to sign on, sign up their, their name on a piece of paper, those days are over because of the transfer portal. And so you have to talk to them about your school, talk to them about what you're going to do. You have to treat them the same way that they're being recruited, and, and then you go from there. Um, and so I think our, our staff did a great job of that, and it's, it's great to see you know, such a variety of guys throughout the country coming in this class. Ryan, I understand that Ohio State's a big brand. I mean, there's no question about it, but there are other programs in this country that have big brands that can't recruit the way this place has been recruiting the last seven years. And Urban Meyer had a name to him, you know, and maybe you're building yours now in the playoff undefeated first year. But did you encounter any when you're on the road when Urban Meyer would walk into a high school, maybe even with some people, everybody knew who Urban Meyer was. Maybe you didn't have that at the beginning of the year. Was there any difficulties in continuing that? Uh, no, no. I mean, certainly, like you said, you know, uh, Urban's, you know, larger than life when he goes on the road and he's like a rock star and all that. But, uh, but at the end of the day, I think that these kids want – uh, uh, relationships, and they want people who care about their kids, you know, and um, that's what it comes down to in the end. It's about building the relationships, and then bringing them here, and once they get here, they realize that this is such a special place, and the circle of care that's been built here by Gene Smith and the administration, it, it just blows people away, and they, I think they feel that family atmosphere. You know, it's hard to find a place where you're competing for national championships, but when you walk in the building, you just feel the love, and you feel family, and I think more than anything, that's what a parent wants, and, you know, as a head coach, I want to be approachable and, and be able to pick up my phone and talk to them about those things and, and be there to develop their, their sons. And I think, again, you know, Ohio State will get you in the door, but that's not going to close a deal. You have to really, you know, show that you're going to take care of their sons. And that's, that's what I think, our, again, our staff's done a good job of. Ryan, I don't mean to belabor the quarterback point, but, you know, signing two, especially as difficult as the process is anymore, as you've talked about a number of times, <clears throat> You didn't get to sell the same thing that other schools that were just looking for one guy. How how did you have to tailor that message? How did you pull this off? I guess. Well, no, it, it isn't even pulling it off. It's just what a great opportunity, you know. I, I mean, I think if you're if you're a high school quarterback right now, um, you know, with an opportunity to come play quarterback at Ohio State, I mean, there's a lot of people that would want to do that, and it's exciting time, you know. And, and just look look what we've done the last couple of years, and look what Justin's done, look what Dwayne's done, and obviously look what Joe's done, and so when you combine that all up, yeah, there's, there's some great excitement. And I think, um, you know, for, for the situation that we have, it's unbelievable because you have Justin and, and you have Gunner. Uh, but, but other than that, there, there's, there, there's nobody in the program other than, you know, some of the other walk-ons who are still developing. And, and we hope that they become, um, you know, candidates to, to win a backup job or whatever. But, you know, in terms of scholarship guys, that's it. Um, you know, because we had the hole in there with Matt and when Tate left. And so I think that was exciting to them, and, and they want to get in here and get developed. And I think they see what we're doing on offense and exciting to them. And at running back, I think it was probably an up-and-down year for you a little bit recruiting there. To end up with Mayan, what made him uh, the guy? Well, first off, he's from Ohio. That, that matters a lot. Uh, he's a big, strong, physical back. He's very, very uh, productive. Everybody in that area just talked about how strong of a runner he was, how productive he was. And so, you know, after we kept going through it over and over again, we've looked at a lot of people throughout the country. We're like, wait a minute, we got one right in Ohio here. And I think that, that meant a lot to us. And I just think he's going to have a great career. He runs with an edge. He runs tough. He runs hard. He's, it's like he's angry when he runs. And we like that. So, um, and, and he's big and strong. So uh, we just think that he's a great fit. and He's another Buckeye. Urban Meyer always said the number one trait that he looked for in a recruit was competitiveness. What's the number one thing that you want when you're out recruiting? Yeah, I mean, competitiveness is one of them, but there's so many more things that go into it, you know, that we, we look for. It's the whole package. And 
whether it's the film, whether it's the transcript, whether it's what people say in the school, it's just a piece of the pie. And I think when you start to put all those pieces together, you get a good picture of who they are. Uh, but, but there's a lot that goes into it. And the right fit, the right background, uh, the right family situation, you know, and, and it's not always a perfect thing, you know, like we'll just look for one thing. No, it's, it's a lot, and especially here. Um, because, you know, there's a lot of people who want to be Buckeyes. And so, um, you know, we can go, you know, recruit some of the best players and best families and best students in the country, and we don't have to compromise in one of those areas. Ryan, this is as much of a bounce in your step as I've seen in a little bit. Um, if your feeling after the Michigan win was one of relief, what is it today? Oh, this is exciting. This is a great day for us. I mean, the, the amount of work that gets put into putting a class together, the phone calls, the traveling, uh, the meetings, uh, you know, just on a – Let's say it's a junior day after or after spring ball, you know, the, the meetings in your office to talk to families and all the you, you can't imagine the amount of time it takes in recruiting. And to put together a class like this, it's just great. And, and we have great people, too. So, um, you know, you, you want to know where the program is headed. Obviously, you look at you look at how we did this year, but that that that's great. But when you want to look at the future, you look at recruiting. And not only do we have great players, we have great families and great students and great people and great leaders who are loyal that, you know, it wasn't easy for them. It wasn't like this was real smooth this last year. You know, we had a coaching change. We had, uh, you know, Coach Halfley leave a week before signing day. And these guys stuck in there. And that goes to show you when adversity hits, these guys are going to be strong. And so uh, it's exciting for our program because it's our future. Ryan, you guys are uh, preparing to face a pretty versatile defender in Isaiah Simmons. You've done a lot of different things with Pete Warner this year. When you guys look at Court Williams, do you, do you see him as that kind of player? And just what, what did you guys like about him as you evaluated him? Yeah, first off, Court isn't uh, – I'll be surprised if he's not a captain when he's here. I've said that to he and his pa parents a million times. They're probably tired of me hearing, that, or hearing me say that. But state champ, uh, you know, in California, which is not, not easy to do. He comes from a great program, same program as Wyatt Davis. And the coaches at, uh, at Bosco do an unbelievable job. And – uh, to go and, and win the way they did in the state championship, play the way that they played. He, he's playing at a high level. And he's got a lot of versatility. He can do a lot of things. And so we're going to find different ways to get him on the field. Like you said, he's kind of, um, you know, has – he's a little bit different style th than Simmons. Simmons is a little bit longer. Court's maybe a little bit more compact and a little bit uh, bigger. But, but, but same idea, though. You can use different things with him, and those are the kind of guys you want. Hard to evaluate guys at the high school level when you're looking for somebody like that. Like, how, how often do you encounter high school programs who use guys in that way? Or are they more, uh, more and more. Okay. I think more and more now. You know, I think more with the three down fronts and the hybrid fronts. You're starting to see more of that in, in high school. Okay. Yeah. And uh, this offensive line class, you talked about it a little bit. It, it looks like you have a pretty good mix of guys who, if you needed them to, are a little advanced, could be <coughs> QD maybe next year, and then some more developmental guys. Is this the, the sweet spot for an offensive line group? And then for those developmental players, how important is it that they come from Ohio and neighboring states and not from far away? Yeah, you hit, you hit it right on the head. I, I think it's a great mix. Um, I think you're looking at guys like Paris and Luke who, uh, you know, have an opportunity to come in here and compete right away. I think, you know, Trey and, and uh, Jacob, uh, Josh, you know, they, they know, you know, they have a little developing to do, whether it's, you know, just playing more, whether it's physically, whatever it is, you know, they need to get in here and, and – um, and just learn the offense, learn what's going on, get bigger, get stronger. Get you know, Josh Myers it took him three years to get on the field. There's nothing wrong with that as an offensive lineman, and uh, and sometimes that's the best way to go about it. But but yeah, like you said, there's a nice combination there. And again, I, I having those Ohio guys here who are loyal, who you know they're going to put years into the program, they're going to develop, they want to get their degree here, they're Buckeyes. Yeah, that means a lot. You need to have that in the program, and and these are great guys. I mean, you talk about Jacob James and what he did at Elder this year, and his family are great people. Um, so, you know, we're, we're super excited. Uh, Ty Hamilton is the only local kid here. What do you like about him? What do you, is he one of those developmental guys, or what do you, what do you like about him? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's going into this year, uh, you know, Ty had some stuff going on, but nothing, nothing huge. And uh, when you look at what Devon did first off, you know, that's kind of the model. But uh, Larry Johnson saw something in him in camp this year that he really liked, and then all of a sudden he had a great year. Um, he was kind of terrorizing every team he played, played big, played strong, and, um, you know, I, th I think he's got a chance to be really good. And, you know, I think he probably has a chance to have a bigger impact early on in the career than we thought maybe going into the this season. Um, so uh, between he and Devon, they really had <laughs> great seasons. How similar is he to Devon? I think he's different. Yeah, I think Devon's a little bit bigger, you know, and, and thicker. Uh, Ty's a little bit more quicker, um, maybe a little bit more explosive. But I'm sure if you ask them, they would they would fight over both of those things. And, and um, just – 
having been through the whole cycle for the first time, <coughs> what was there about the process that you could not have anticipated until you went through it? Uh, I, no, I, I, mean, I think I don't think there was anything that I wasn't uh, ready for. You know, it, it's it's just the time and it's building relationships and, and and being honest. That's the biggest thing. You know, it's not about getting a sale. You know, I was around a coach one time where you know you put a book on your desk and it was about how to close a sale. Like that's not what recruiting is. It's about building a vision and letting them know what your program is and what you're going to do for their sons, building that relationships, and then treat them the way they're recruited. That's what it comes down to. And so uh, when you're honest and you're real with them, then, then it, obviously it translates better for when they get here. It's not about getting them to sign. It's about making sure they're successful when they're here. And, um, and so we just went with that and trusted it, and, and it went well. Ryan, during uh, C.J. Stroud's uh, announcement, he was saying that after the opening, he played well at the opening. They were played with other Ohio State commits, and they reported back to you that this this guy's leadership is good. This guy's, I guess, pretty good. Was that when he kind of got on your guys' radar? Yeah. So I mean, like you like you said, we ask a lot of people about a lot of people, and um, and you know, we got a lot of great feedback on C.J. And uh, yeah, up until then, he was he was kind of an unknown and. You know, we were looking at a lot of different quarterbacks out there and trying to figure out what was the right fit, you know, in the room with Jack. And, and, um, and so the more we learned about C.J. and, and so certainly the senior year that he had, uh, you know, goes to show you how talented he is. And I think those guys are going to get along great. They're going to compete. They're both going to get developed and, and, and let them fight it out. But, um, but it wasn't like we just flippantly made this decision. I mean, it was a lot of conversation about what was the right fit in that room. And, um, you know, we, we asked some of the players, you know, what, what C.J. was like, and, and we got a lot of great feedback. Feedback, what do you think was the, the biggest thing they told you? Uh, as a person, you know, his communication, his leadership, um, you know, he just, he handles himself the right way. He looks you in the eye, he shakes your hand. I mean, um, I think you're talking about somebody who was raised the right way and um, he's got a lot of respect and makes great decisions. Uh, over here to the right, Tim. Uh, Ryan, speaking of that, I would think Ryan Day, New Hampshire star quarterback, would be the start of this. But uh, what is the prototype, the template you have in your mind as you're looking at quarterbacks now, is it just wide open? And if this guy is a great player and a great person, I'll make him fit. Just how do you approach that now? Uh, the first thing I think you look for is um, an extraordinary quality. That's what you want. And, and then you can, you can tailor the offense based on what that quality is. Um, and hopefully you can find two or three. And if you have, you probably have a great one. Um, and that's what we look for. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. There's uh, certainly the aptitude of being able to handle information, um, you know, see the field, accuracy, athletic ability, size, uh, hand, ability to handle adversity, um, family situation. You know, what's it going to be like when uh, they're not named the starter? Are they going to, you know, their parents going to come in and, and ask to transfer right away? I mean, there's a lot of things that go into play. And uh, we do the best we can to make that decision, and we go from there. Here's another quickie follow up on that. Uh, did, did, did you actually ask, like, Jack and CJ? Hey, give us a two-year commitment. I mean, you know, do, does that even come up in, with the transfer portal situation as it is? I mean, do you, do you ask for some kind of, like, tacit commitment? No, what we tell them is, you know, that we, we expect them to be here and graduate. That's, that's what we expect. And, you know, um, in this day and age, you know, I, I know that the transfer portal is in there, but that's not even a conversation. That's not even one. It's something that we bring up. Um, it, it's about coming in here, competing, winning a job, and getting your degree and going on to do great things. And that's, that's it. Because uh, we know that they're going to – and everybody knows they have to compete. And the only thing I can guarantee is that there's going to be two or three other guys in a room, really good players because they're getting recruited by Ohio State, that they're going to have to compete against. And, you know, if you believe in the system, if you believe in what goes on, you look at what JT and Cardell and Braxton did. You look what – you know, Joe got his degree from here. He fought it out. It was hard. But he got his degree, and, and things are going good for him. And it went good for Dwayne. And so if you just hang in there and you work through it, good things are going to happen to you. And uh, they'll happen to these guys as well. And with a quick thing, K.J. Hill was a, was a signing day uh, commitment way back when and stuff. Is he a, an example of development that this program can bring along? I mean, do you use him as an example of where you can uh, – I, I, what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Come, I guess, you know, in your mind. Again, I wasn't here when he first got here, but, but K.J.'s just had production throughout his career really, though. I mean, s since I've been here, he's been clutch. He's been very, very productive, and I think he's a great example of that. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you look at the guys, and he's not the only one who have been in the program for four and five years, you see a high level of development, and that's kind of what I was getting at with the, with the defensive backs is that, you know, if you're here and you're competing, like Jonah Jackson's a great example of that. Jonah Jackson comes in and competes against Devon Hamilton, and he's blocking Chase Young every day for the last year. Guess what? He's a first-team all-big player. Why? 
I, I mean, there's a lot of reasons to come into it, but one of them is you're going against great players every day, and that's the same thing in every other position. Last couple uh, group of questions. Uh, start with the last Doug. Um, Ryan, would you, do you have room if a, another guy or two wants to be a Buckeye? Uh, we might be able to make some room. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, it's funny how that works. Uh, overall, um, I mean, you're going to have some guys lead for the NFL just overall on numbers. With, and I know it's always fluid, this yeah. kind of thing. Like, how are you overall just looking ahead? Yeah, well, I, 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 we're, we're kind of right at the number right now, but uh, there's some wiggle room in there. I forgot to ask about Dewan Jones on Monday, so I'm going to make it a recruiting question today. A guy like that, a year ago, he's kind of like maybe a raw guy with some tools. What have you thought of his development this year? And then... Are you sometimes intrigued by recruits like that who maybe, are, maybe aren't as polished, but you think, man, we might be able to do something with this guy? Yeah, I just talked about it today, walking out in the field, that we didn't uh, – Enoch Viamahe and Dewan Jones were not really even much on our board all that much at this point last year. And then we went out and found those guys. And, um, you know, Enoch was, was you know, pretty heavily recruited, uh, you know, but, but Dewan really wasn't. He kind of came on the scene late. And to see the way those guys have developed um, – those guys are really good players. I mean, really good players. They work hard. They're great kids. Studs done a great job of, of – uh, and they've gotten a lot of work this year. You know, we were talking about that the other day. Typically, young offensive linemen don't get as much work, game experience. These guys played. And, and when you're, again, when you're on the scout team going against those guys, you know, Jay Sean Cornell and Coop and those guys every day, you're just getting better. And I think they've done a great job. And, you know, both those guys came in here in the summer, and it's, it's December. So – like, you know, what, seven months? They've come a long way. Um, you tell the story a couple of years ago. You're in California watching Jack Tuttle, and you come across Chris Olave. You have two Arizona kids, two California kids, a Washington kid in this class. You were involved with a lot of other guys in that area of the country. Why, why was Ohio State on the West Coast in this class? You know, I, I think it's, it's more of just there were really good players out there, and when we went out there and you make those calls and you go out there and visit those guys in the spring or, or last um, – Last winter, there's interest there. And, you know, we played in that Rose Bowl. I don't know if that had something to do with it, just being out that way, but, but there was just an interest there. And we followed up with it, and we fell in love with these guys. I mean, Lathan Ransom is going to be as good a safety as we've had here in a long time. And uh, he and his family are unbelievable people. They believed in this place. They believed in what we're doing. And, you know, I, I'm so excited he's part of this thing. And, again, whether he's from Arizona or, you know, um, you know, Kentucky or wherever, it doesn't matter. I mean, this is a guy who wants to be at Ohio State. He's a great student, great person, has a chance to be a really good player. He's only 17 years old. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what it is nowadays. Again, I think that maybe the, the world's gotten a little smaller and guys are, you know, um, less inclined to stay closer to home. They're, they're okay with going a little bit further away to play. And so uh, you know, because of that, I feel strong. And I think when you look at our locker room, it's not, um, you know, there's a lot of Ohio guys here, a lot of Midwest guys, but there's also like some guys, like you said, Chris and Wyatt and different people from throughout the country where there is that support system in place when they get here. You know, again, Enix from Hawaii, there, there's different people throughout the country, guys from Texas, JK, um, Jeff, uh, Barron, you know, those guys, they kind of take them in and say, listen, it's gonna be, you're going to be homesick a little bit, but it's okay. And the Ohio guys are, are the foundation of this program, but they're, they're the ones that, that kind of set the whole pace of this program, and, and they're willing to bring guys in. You know, they don't get territorial. And, again, I don't know if it's like that in every program, but it's really, it's a really good culture here. And final question. Second row, Bill. Steve. Yeah, Coach, uh, you've talked several times today about getting guys their degrees. As I looked at your commencement list the other day, I think 11 of your 22 starters for your bowl game will be Ohio State graduates. Just, um, I know your kids come here hoping to get to the National Football League, and plenty of them will, but... Is this also part of the recruiting pitch that just watch our game? This guy's a graduate. This guy's a graduate. Just I don't know what. What do you say about that and the and the support that those guys have gotten here? Yeah, I'm I'm really proud of that. And I think that there is you know for people who don't know Ohio State, sometimes they think because we play at such a high level of football, there's a little bit of that factory tag. And then the closer they get to the program, they realize that's nothing to be the case. And when you look at uh, the guys who are on our team, when you look at how veteran we are, I think that that goes to show you why the season we've had is because we have veteran guys, we have graduates out there, we have some senior-laden, uh, we have a senior-laden team, and that matters. And I think, you know, the more veteran you can, have, you can be, the better. 
and, and the more you can develop these guys and get them into their fourth and fifth year, the better it's going to be. And some of these guys, you know, a lot of these guys are working on their masters. And the, the way that it's organized for, for, for these guys where they can get their masters paid for and come back and finish it, it's as good as they're anywhere as they're in the country. And so when you combine all that together with competing for national championships, it makes it very, very attractive for recruits. And just last thing, um, we talked to you Monday. You've now had a couple more days of practice to prepare, and you're sending everybody away uh, to go home for a few days. Uh, what have you learned about this team the last few days? Are you happy with the preparation? Are you if you feel like you got everything you needed to get accomplished? Well, it, it's, it's, um, it's very different because we practice five of the last six days, and you, typically you have different phases as you get ready for bowl practice, but this was very different. And we had three really good days of practice, had a good day of practice today, but they need to go home for three days and get away and then uh, meet us in, um, in Arizona on Sunday and then have a great week of practice. You know, it's a long season, and um, – it's, it's almost like having just a, a couple of bye weeks getting ready for a game. It's not really like getting ready for a bowl game, in my opinion. And so I think these three days are going to be critical for them to get home. It's only three days. You know, you make it, we, we're kind of making it sound like as coaches, like they were going away for a week. You know, they get away from us for a few days. It seems like a long time. But they get home with their families. They, they deserve it. Um, you know, they, they need to get some rest and then see us in Arizona.